Good morning, students. Good morning, everyone. I will take the last part of the solution is that is went of factor. Now tell me why went of factor is so important to explain the quadrative property because of the one of the important drawbacks of the quadrative property is it can be applied only for the dilute solution and solute should not undergo dissociation and association because of if any molecule undergo dissociation then going to break and two particles are formed if it is dissociation but if I, I take P4, it is divided into 1 by 4. Tetramerization, sulfur 8, 1 by 8, it is association, but NaCl undergo dissociation. As such, the value of colligative property must be affected. Therefore, it was need of an hour to modify the colligative property. And who explained, who modified the colligative property? Van Gogh factor. And why Van Gogh factor is so important? Because of molecules undergo two phenomena. One is called as dissociation and other is known as, what is that? Association. If they undergo dissociation, as well as association, abnormal molar mass is obtained. Therefore, to explain, the abnormal molar mass went off introduced the term I to explain abnormal molar mass because abnormal molar mass is due to the dissociation as well as what? Association. Therefore, what is abnormal molar mass? The mass which is different from expected or theoretical theoretical molar mass is called abnormal molar mass it is due to Dissociation or what is that? Association. Thus, Van Hoof introduced the term term I, that means iota is the ratio to explain dissociation and association, I mean abnormal molar mass. And what is the I actually? It is the ratio between normal molar mass upon abnormal molar mass. I again further modified, uh, modified in terms of theoretical molar mass upon you can say experimental molar mass. Further I can again modify it in terms of this is the normal molar mass upon abnormal molar mass, theoretical molar mass upon experimental molar mass, calculated molar mass upon what is that? Observed molar mass. Since we know that qualitative property is inversely proportional to the molar mass, thus in terms of qualitative property, it will be vice versa. What the actually the abnormal value of qualitative property to the normal value of qualitative property. Further you can say experimental value of qualitative property to the theoretical value of qualitative property. Further you can change observed value of colligative property 
to the calculated value of qualitative property, both are one and the same thing. But here in terms of normal molar mass upon abnormal molar mass. Since molar mass is inversely proportional to the qualitative property, therefore you just change it. This is the abnormal value of qualitative property to the normal value of qualitative property. See another definition given by Renthoff to explain the abnormal molar mass is I is further defined as it is the ratio between total number of particles formed after dissociation or association divided by actual number of particles taken before dissociation or what is there? Association. The students, for a jerk to stand better, if I say in case of case one, dissociation, I say NACN, it is going to split into two forms, sodium positive and chlorine negative. What is the I? Rental factor for NACN is the total number of particles formed after dissociation or association, but this example is pertaining to dissociation, not association. I will let this. Is. So, how many particles form? Two, and actual taken one. So, what is the better factor? And is here. That is the two. In case of AlCl3, what is the better factor? Al3 positive chlorine one. So, I equal to 4 by 1, it is the 4, and in case of Al2, SO4 whole thrice going to split into 2Al3 positive plus 3 times sulfate 2 negative. What is the Vento factor? Vento factor here is I equal to total number of particles from 3 plus 2, 5 by 1, so it is the 5. So in case of dissociation, we can take the total number of particles formed after dissociation divided by actual number of particles taken before dissociation. So far as example for association is concerned, few organic molecules like, like acetic acid, whenever dissolve in benzene, they undergo dimerization due to hydrogen bonding. In that case, CS3COH2, therefore, two particles changes into one or one into one by two. Let, therefore, in case of the association, particle is going to be divided. So, this is the what is that? R is equal to total number of particles associated one by two or actual number of particles taken. What is that? Two and particle associated, one by two by two. So what is that answer? This is the one. In case of, so why it is like this? Because just you change, uh, just you draw the structure of acetic acid, it is like this, CS3, C double O, O, OH. Two molecules acetic acid are bonded. By what bond? What bond? Hydrogen bond, so it is dimerization. So in case of dimerization, particles are reduced. Association. So far as benzoic acid is concerned, two molecules, they undergo dimerization to form. In case of the benzoic acid, whenever dissolved in benzene, COOH, like two, reduced. In the same way, you can calculate the I. But remember, acetic acid will dissolve in water. So tell me anybody, if I put acetic acid in water, water being a good polar solvent, so it is not associated, it is always, what is that? Dissociated and then it gives acetate ion plus hydrogen ion. So this is what it is dissociation. Because you see the medium solvent here, it is the water. So, 
dissociation and association like I give you other example P4 then the more catalyzed to form 1 by 4 one particle reduced in 4 bonds reduced association takes place tetramerization tetramerization sulfurate what is this octamerization 1 by 8 the way the qualitative property must be affected because now some particles undergo dissociation and some particle undergo also CSF. But tell me which particles neither undergo dissociation nor undergo association. So this is the case C. So uh, one thing in case of dissociation A part I is always greater than 1. It is dissociation. B I is lesser than 1 in case of association and C I is equal to 1 neither dissociation nor association it will remain 1 before and after for example glucose sucrose urea they neither undergo dissociation or association it will remain 1 thus See, modified form of qualitative property is as the strengths you write in the nutshell that first is the relative lowering of vapor pressure, second is the elevation in boiling point, and third is the depression in freezing point and the finally it is the osmotic pressure how can you modify these values because of qualitative property required modification that is already done by the Van Hoff in 1880 which is popularly known as Van Hoff factor I so P0 minus PS upon P0 is equal to chi B into I what is chi B number of moles of solute multiply by i if it is dissociated or even associated just to see the numerical and understand the line of the numerical and you solve the question elevation in boiling point delta tb kb into molarity into i what is the depression in freezing point delta tf is equal to kf into m into i and what is the osmotic pressure Pi is equal to CRT into I. What is C? Concentration. Number of moles per unit volume. And number of moles is given mass upon molar mass. WB upon MB multiplied by R into T into I. So concentration can be modified in terms of WB upon MB into volume into R into T into what is that? I. So I, I, I. That means what is I? I is Van Hoff factor that is very much linked with dissociation and association. If neither dissociation nor association, that is only few and selected molecules like urea, glucose, fructose, lactose, they neither undergo dissociation and that is so. Good morning, everyone. In the series of the lecture, my dear students, I have uh, completed the every part of solution except the last part which is called as Vento factor. I have already explained Vento factor. What is that factor? It is the ratio between number of moles of particle form after dissociation or association divided by the total number of moles taken before dissociation and association. Another formula for Vento factor is normal molar mass to the abnormal molar mass. It is the ratio between uh, theoretical molar mass to the observed molar mass. It is the ratio between calculated molar mass to the experimental molar mass. After that, I would like to derive the dissociation. See, derivation of, write down everyone, derivation of Dissociation. See, 
let us consider one mole of substance undergo one mole of substance undergo dissociation undergo dissociation to form n particles let alpha is the what is that alpha alpha is the degree of dissociation degree of dissociation then moles formed n alpha moles are dissociated what is that 1 minus alpha so total moles in solution total moles is equal to 1 minus alpha plus n into alpha so at equilibrium what is the vento factor i it is the ratio between the total number of moles formed after dissociation divided by the actual number of moles taken before dissociation because it is the case of dissociation so that is the ratio 1 minus alpha plus n into alpha divided by 1 1 is to be multiplied by i into 1 i is the vento factor 1 minus alpha plus n alpha so i minus 1 equal to minus alpha plus n alpha it's all right then i minus 1 equal to alpha and alpha take common minus 1 plus n or i minus 1 is equal to alpha n minus 1 actually you have to take alpha alpha is what actually extent of dissociation so alpha is equal to which is the ratio between i minus 1 upon n minus 1 this is what it is the derivation of dissociation dear students what is alpha alpha is the degree of dissociation what is i i is the vento factor and n is the number of moles of particle formed after dissociation if i put to a question here calculate write down question calculate vento factor for k4 efficient whole 6 if it is dissociated up to 80% question is what I have to calculate vento factor I, I have to calculate and what is the dissociation here K4 efficient whole 6 that substance undergo dissociation so first of all and alpha is 80% that means that means alpha is 80 divided by 100 0.8% this is the degree of dissociation and what is the year n number of particle formed after dissociation so in case of n k4 fecn whole 6 undergo dissociation to form how many particles k positive 4 times fecn whole 6 for negative this is the 4 plus 1 this is the 5 so i is actually total number of particles formed after dissociation divided by actual number of particles taken before dissociation 4 plus 1 5 5 by 1 so i is equal to here 5 what i have to calculate vento factor in case of dissociation so the formula which i have already derived tell me anybody the formula alpha is equal to i minus 1 upon 1 by n minus 1 what is uh, alpha is equal to i minus 1 upon see
alpha is equal to i minus 1 upon n minus 1. This is what? So you put it here alpha is equal to i minus 1 upon n minus 1. This is the formula. Alpha is what? Here 0.8. You have to calculate i and n minus 1. 5 minus 1. What is that? Number of particle form 5 or minus 1. So 0 0.8 is equal to i minus 1 upon this is the 4. 3.2 is equal to i minus 1 or i is equal to 4.2 is the right answer. The way you have calculated the Vento factor if it is dissociated up to 80%. If it will be dissociated up to 60% then I will take 0 0.6. If it is dissociated up to 50% 0 0.5. If it is completely dissociated then it is the 1. So alpha is taken as 1. Is it clear to you?